The Supreme Court of the United States is getting ready to hear a Christian postman's discrimination case over Sunday work. On January 13th, the U.S. Supreme Court agreed to consider a case of religious discrimination filed by Jared Groff. Groff, a Pennsylvania ball carrier, sued the Postal Service in 2019. Being an evangelical Christian, Gerard was refused, he refused to take shifts on Sundays. Initially, he was reassigned to a branch that had no Sunday shifts to accommodate his needs. However, the new branch also started assigning him Sunday shifts. He was told to find coworkers willing to take his Sunday shifts, but his coworkers became resentful of the extra shifts. Some even ended up quitting because of it. The post office implemented a no exceptions rule pertaining to Sunday shifts, which Gerard ignored. Gerald, I can't talk. He did not show up for more than two dozen assignments. Gerald was finally, a, 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 excuse me, he eventually quit the job and sued the postal service. The court ruled that Droff was treated no different than any other employee and that, quote, Sunday service was necessary for the post office's business. The court sided with the Postal Service, noting the 1977 case, TWA versus Hardison, which ruled that employers do not have to offer religious accommodation if it created a, quote unquote, undue hardship on the employer. Groff's lawyers appealed the decision, stating that, quote, no American should be forced to choose between their religion and their job. It is assumed that Gerard's lawyers will try to get the Supreme Court to overrule the judgment. No American has to choose between their religion and their job? Should be forced to. Should be forced to. So if I need to sacrifice a virgin every noon for my religion... I should not be able to, I should have, I should not be forced to choose between my job and my religion. Oh, my word. Um, uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> such an absolutist statement. No American should have to be forced. Like, I don't, I don't know if you understand what conclusions I could make from that such an absolute statement like that, sir. I could come up with the most bizarre scenarios which you would be, you know, Anyways, um, I mean, this is another case of those um, Christians thinking that because of, of their because their privileges are being taken away, that they're being discriminated against. Right. They're like, oh, I want special treatment because I have a relationship with my magic sky daddy. And now that you're not, this, you know, treating me like a special little snowflake that I am better than the rest of the society, I feel discriminated against. This is one of those mm -hmm. examples, isn't it? Basically. It's well, so in America, we have a situation where you have a right to have religious accommodation in your workplace. Now the asterisk is, is that that accommodation cannot cause a quote unquote undue hardship on the employer. And so this case that the Supreme Court is going to take up is basically going to contest the basis of that law and re-examine potentially what is even considered um, uh, undue hardship and how the lengths that employers have to go to to accommodate the religious beliefs of their employees. And so the argument from this man's attorneys and the firm is that basically for too long, the Supreme Court has sided on the side of corporations over the rights of the ordinary American. Um, yeah, and to the secular point, he's mm -hmm. saying, oh, interesting. This is going to make the conservatives have to decide what's more important, the rights of religions or the rights of businesses. And D is saying this is actually very significant for the Supreme Court and how regular Americans will be affected. And one thing that I would I thought was very interesting was that there are a collection of minority faith communities that have sided with the plaintiff. And they have said, like there is a Sikh coalition that sided with him. There are two different Muslim organizations that sided with him. And they're basically saying that as religious minorities, their rights are not already accommodated because we do live in like a Christian majority of society, right? So like a lot of our 
life is automatically structured around Christian events like Christmas. That's when everyone takes off for winter holiday, stuff like that. Or like there's a long period of time off for Easter at certain schools, um, stuff like that. So they're saying like in a society that automatically is built around accommodating Christianity, we have to go above and beyond to get the accommodations that we need for our faith. And to that extent, we are siding with this man because we would benefit from these rules being changed, essentially. Um, <laughs> I love this comment from Gaijin American. He's saying, holy shit, I can use Taoism to take off every new moon. Do it. <laughs> Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Take advantage of this whole, yeah. All right. Well, that was interesting. I, again, I'm, I'm a secular rarity mentioned. I'm very interested to see what conservative like. Oh my God, Christianity or corporations like this is like too. So I don't this know. Is what like, the yeah, choose. American battle of the century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which do we value more highly? Yeah. All right, so I'll be really interesting have... to see when this um, comes up. I'm not I don't remember off the top of my head um, when the Supreme Court is going to actually hear the case because they just said that they will. I don't know when it's scheduled, though, yet because, you know, these happen like months later. Oh, also this this comment. Look at this. Oh, uh, Andrew was saying also, I'm so glad I finally caught a live. Love you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.